Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. Today we have Upside Down Magic. This is a Disney Channel original movie. Uh, it's based on a book by Sarah Minowski, book series, I should say. Um, it is from 2020. It's an hour and 37 minutes long. And uh, yeah, it's... I'm just going to get this out of the way. It's it's definitely in the <laughs> realm of Harry Potter. Not no, Not the same universe or anything. No, this is an American... Harry Potter-like story, except there's a lot more <laughs> diversity at the school. Uh, there's not just one one black guy and Cho Chang and a bunch of white kids. Uh, this is actually a lot more than that. So <laughs> it's uh, it's set in in America, uh, the school that they uh, disappear off to. Uh, well, that. Uh, <laughs> that's apparently an American soil as well. I, who knows? Who it doesn't matter? It's it's another universe for all we know. It doesn't matter. But everybody's speaking American English in this, so yeah. Uh, don't expect any British actors stepping into the role. Uh, however, um, they still have a lot of very colorful, uh, eccentric, um, big acting teachers. Let's just say. Uh, they are not as, say, as much of a focus as, say, we would see Snape or a Dumbledore or, you know, or McGonagall. Uh, but they are there. They're, they're the authority figures, uh, and this is very much about uh, somewhat of a teen, teenage rebellion and finding who you are despite what everybody says you should be. And if you, it, trying to, people trying to pigeonhole you into, you know, certain doing certain way, being certain ways and doing certain things in order to be accepted. And that's, it's an important uh, uh, lesson to be teaching kids. Uh, yes, this is absolutely <laughs> aimed towards kids. This is not meant for people my age, uh, but it's enjoyable nonetheless. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's not gonna replace Harry Potter. If your kids love Harry Potter, it's not gonna replace their love of Harry Potter. It's not, if, as an adult, if you love Harry Potter, it's not going to replace Harry Potter as your uh, favorite magic-based uh, series of all time. So far, this is just a movie. I, I try to see if... It gives me the impression that there was more... Like, there, maybe this is a spin-off from a series, or possibly a pilot, a very long pilot for a series, which could be the case. I don't know. It came out in 2020, and God knows how the pandemic screwed all sorts of productions up. Maybe something was already in the works, a sequel as a movie, because there is a bit of a little tag at the end that gives you the indication, very vague one though, that there might be more stories, which you know, probably will be if it's based on a book series. Um, yeah, and by the way, when I say Harry Potter, it's I'm, I'm not saying it's it's a copycat. Uh, it's very much aware of its of its uh, influences, of its where it, where it comes from, because even the characters are very much uh, aware of Harry Potter, in a sense, because uh, I'm going to ruin this, but it's it's my favorite scene in the movie. And I can't say that I have a favorite scene in most Disney Channel movies. Um, but it's... It, you know what? I, I can't give it to you just yet, because I have to give you the premise. Uh, otherwise, it won't make much sense. Um, we got a main, uh, our main character named Nori. Uh, she is right there in the middle with the wings... Uh, she learns every kid is special in their own way, but she discovers that uh, she is good at magic. There's a reference to the fact that mom was uh, was very good at magic. Dad um, seems surprised when his daughter suddenly transforms into a giant dragon cat or some sort of mishmash of animals. She can transform into animals, usually not what she wants to, or or just one. Thing like, hey, let's change into a kitten. Uh, no, it has to be a kitten with dragon wings or a just it's a mishmash of you know five or six different animals half the time. It's got a beaver tail and a moose horns. I don't know. It's just got it's got all these different things uh, that she's she doesn't have a control over. It. Especially when she gets upset or surprised, it can really wreak havoc on things. And uh, yeah, see, um, she discovers this. They they burn through the the whole discovery of your power and sending off to school thing like that. It's super fast. Before you know it, they're waiting for the bus to arrive to pick them up. 
while their parents, who are fully knowledgeable of what they are, um, stand with them. And of course, you know, it's, uh, it's, there's no bus coming. Something else happens. But uh, about this time is when we meet a very scrungy kind of guy. Uh, what's his name? He's, 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 he's Scruff. Scriff? Why can't I see his name? It's so small. Scriff. Scriff. He, uh, he's played by Kyle Howard. Kyle Howard. You might recognize him from a bunch of stuff. He's been around for a while. He's a character actor for the most part. Uh, but he's done a lot of... A lot of uh, his face is so familiar when I see him. Uh, but he's kind of a... He looks like a down-in-his-luck kind of ex-guitarist for a band that you <laughs> you grew up with, you know. It's uh, like... And he just sort of never grew out of that. But he turns out he's the caretaker for the school, and he's also responsible for bringing the kids into the area where the school is. And he's kind of like Hagrid. I'm going to use a lot of Harry Potter references because it's going to make the most sense that way if you know Harry Potter. If you don't know Harry Potter, well, I'm sorry. But um, I'll try to balance it. So uh, he brings him into the school. He's uh, our first contact with the uh, magical world. Um, and he doesn't seem very magical at all. He seems kind of, you know, like a bum for the most part. He's He's grumpy. He's annoyed by the kids. He's kind of a jerk. And, uh, of course, all the kids are very excited to be coming to the school, especially Nori and her best friend. Uh, again, not really explaining how she just happens to also have a best friend who is into magic. There might be a whole lot more magic kids than we think, but this school doesn't have, seem to have a lot of kids at it. So uh, her name is uh, Reina, and she is played... Okay, first of all, Nori is played by... My eyes are so bad. Isabella Rose and uh, Sienna Argonong. Oh, I know I pronounced that wrong. Uh, Reina, uh, the two of them, Reina, by the way, the girl who played Reina, also played a young uh, Mila from F in F9, Fantastic, uh, yeah, Fantastic, Fast and Furious 9, when they played the teenage version of them, she was in Fast 9. So, <clears throat> they're best friends, they're super supportive of each other, they love each other, and it's great that they have somebody to, to encourage each other, and have support, and it's they're absolute best friends. You can see that from the very start, the very first scene they're in, and they get to school, and they're so excited, and suddenly they get taken in very different paths. Of course, just like Harry Potter, just like Hogwarts, the school is divided up into it like a class system. Uh, well, the class system exists in all walks of life, but we're also talking about breaking up into different um, groups. You know, like we had Slytherin and Gryffindor and Hufflepuff and, and Ravenclaw. Well, this is the Flickers, who can grab things out of there, like telekinesis in a sense, or push them. Uh, then there's the Flamers. I don't know. It's <laughs> probably not Flamers. Uh, but there's one people who, uh, kids who can work with fire, kids who can work with moving objects, kids who can transform into other animals, which is what uh, Nori is, and uh, kids who can fly. So we got four houses. And, uh, oh, by the way, remember I told you that Nori, Nori's mom was good at magic? That is a past tense, of course. She only has one parent. Ding, ding, ding. Disney single parent uh, story. So they it just they just seem to go back to that all the time. Anyway, they get there, and uh, we discover that a lot of kids are, you know, they're put to the test to make sure that they can um, be part of the class. And... Uh, and by the way, I, I'm, I'm yes, I'm telling you a little bit too much that you should should pro you probably don't want to maybe know uh, if you want to don't want to know stop here sorry, uh, but I'm basically just setting up the premise because that's what all these scenes are for. There's not a whole lot of depth. It's mostly exposition. Um, it's like hey, you're now at the school. We're going to test you to make sure that you fit into each class. And so the people who can can you know, control flames, so they're responsible for lighting a candle on fire from across the room, you know, from or six feet away or whatever. Uh, the tr transforming people that who can turn into animals, they have to show that they can turn into a little gray tabby kitten. And then hold it for six seconds, and then turn back. And, and then, so, it turns out that, of course, during these tests, um, oh, by the way, her friend, uh, Nori's friend, Reina, uh, she is very good at controlling fire. So, and she's super good at it. She makes like sparkle bursts of fire and all sorts of stuff. She's she's very talented. Nori has less control over hers. Like I said, she can turn into not one thing but many things all at once, and that shows a lack of control. And uh, people frown on that, apparently. So, 
when they get tested, Nori doesn't really pass because she's a little bit out of control. Uh, Reina, top of the class. She is great. But without Nori by her side, she kind of starts to feel a little bit lonely and she doesn't have confidence in her own powers without Nori cheering her on the whole time. So this is a thing that kids deal with. Uh, they have to maybe have that imposter syndrome, even though they're extremely talented at something, whether it's art or music or any other thing like that. Um, writing or you know or even just school things like math and 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 things like that they may be excellent at it and they were probably throughout elementary school but now they're in junior high and uh, it's a whole new world they're at the bottom of the ladder instead of top of the ladder you know when it comes to ages of kids in the school and stuff like that so it's yeah it's it's you know getting out of your comfort zone which this totally is and that's also uh, learning confidence in your abilities which Raina quickly loses when she meets other kids, including a snotty blonde-haired boy, which, which screams Draco Malfoy, but uh, she, yeah, she loses her confidence because she's separated from Nori, and Nori ends up getting put in the UDM group because that's where the upside-down magic kids go. And you see her, along with a bunch of other kids, actually one from each of the other uh, groups, the one, the flyer, a... Uh, Flicker that can control things and a fire person. So each of them, they're a little bit different looking than all the other very prim and proper kids. Um, they're kind of have an attitude sometimes, or they're just goofy looking, or whatever it is. They look they look different. They act different. They think different. They feel different. And that's something kids can super identify with. Uh, and she and Nori is like, I, I don't belong in this. I, no, yeah, I can't control this stuff, but we don't belong in this group. And they're like forbidden to learn magic there. Like use their abilities to, you know, maybe improve them, learn better. Uh, no, they're just shuffled away and and, uh, and kept away from uh, learning anything. Because if they let them back out into the world... Who knows what kind of havoc they would rain, uh, wreak on the on the world? And so, yeah, there's the premise. Boom, big premise. What do will they get out of that uh, that pigeonhole that they are being pushed into? Are they going to be denied their dreams? They, they're like, oh my gosh, we're going to learn magic. We're going to go to a magic school like Harry Potter. Nobody says Harry Potter, but you know they know Harry Potter exists because. When the uh, groundskeeper, janitor guy that I told you about, who's kind of scruffy, tells him, hey, I got a job for you. Oh, I got a surprise for you, I should say. I got a surprise for you. He goes out to the shed out behind the school, opens it up, and there's a row of brooms. And you know what that means in Harry Potter world? Yes, we're going to fly. And that's exactly what Nori believes. And that's my favorite scene. When Nori goes, yeah, we got brooms. And she hops on one and takes off few inches in the air and then lands flat on her face and it's well done it's well shot and uh the comedy is gold for that just for that i mean yeah hey if you're my age <laughs> you're probably not watching this anyway uh but uh, again the, the lessons are simple the um the characterizations are simple they're not too complex but it, it, it hits the nail on the head very much when it comes to dealing with the emotions and feelings and mentalities that kids may have growing up, whether it's dealing with loneliness or confidence or uh, just trying to make friends. Um, dealing, uh, Raina has her own storyline in this, which crosses over and builds into the big... Uh, big finale and it's a fully complete story it doesn't like go oh to be continued uh we'll finish this off later yes there is a tease for something maybe more but it doesn't ever have to be paid off it's super vague and it doesn't say oh my gosh this thing might be happening now or this person is going to show up no it doesn't do that it just says hey here's the thing it looks mysterious and you know you can be oh okay that was that if it never happens. But I have a feeling it might. Assuming these kids haven't grown out of their roles, uh, one of the characters in this is actually going to be in the new Ms. Marvel series. I won't tell you who, um, but yeah, from Marvel on Disney+. Plus. So yeah, it's uh, it's got a lot of good humor, uh, a lot of you know, Bart humor here and there, uh, but it's, it's, uh, 
it knows that it exists in the modern day as well. This is not 1990s, you know, England and Hogwarts. This is, uh, this is the modern day. And the moment the kids show up at the school, at the school uh, they all get their phones out to take a picture. And they're like, oh, sorry, those don't work here. So it takes care of that issue because you're going to be like, oh, well. I'm gonna if I'm at a freaking magic school, I'm taking as many pictures and videos as I can because this is gonna be freaking cool when I take it back to the real world. And uh, yeah, that doesn't work out so well for them. And it's but it's a, it's a throwaway bit really too. It's really quick. It doesn't even have to be addressed test necessarily. And it, they don't also make a huge deal out of it. It's just boom, we dealt with it and we move on. Because I have a feeling that there's a lot more to this story that. Um, they kind of just had to strip away as much as possible, like they kind of do with the Harry Potter books, uh, especially in uh, the third movie. You know, they had to strip away so much storytelling in order to get Prisoner of Azkaban made in a more streamlined way. Um, <laughs> I talked way too much about Harry Potter. I'm sorry, but um, but yeah, it's the kind of thing that I imagine this would have. This is a working pilot for a series. I mean, because I think this would have actually made work better had they made it a series right off the bat give it give this girl 10 episodes and these girls i should say the the two of them are reina and nori are the main characters for this um give them you know 10 episodes boom and like work this out over time but i think they just had to punch this through and say hey look this works these are good this is a good cast this is a good uh, little story for people who are missing the whole harry potter type of storytelling um it hits a lot of those notes with a much lower special effects bu budget. They do really well. It is 2020. They do really well on the transmorphing. They don't show the transmorphing that much. They do some close-up American Werewolf in London kind of tra transforming on Nori when she turns into a cat a little bit. It's a little unnerving to see whiskers growing out of a teenage girl. It's just weird. Um, this, is, this is not anime. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, seeing that happen. But the, the flying around of the cat dragon and all this other stuff, it's decently done. It's, it doesn't look too out of place. It's not like a, some awkward blue screen from the 1980s or 90s. It is actually pretty good. It, it'll be look horribly dated in 10 years, but it still is good for what they had. And, you know, it's... Yeah. It's, I, could, I, could, I could say the special effects were horrible, but they weren't. They're not top-of-the-line feature film. No. But they are good for what they got. So congratulations to them. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else I can think of that I can mention. There's a number of uh, teachers that have very small parts. You figure they must have a whole lot more to do in the future uh, if they make more of these movies. But the one main teacher uh, who is the most eccentric and kind of gives us Umbr sort of a, a much more lighthearted umbrage uh, sense. I can't find her on here, but yeah, you'll figure it out if you watch this at all. It's it's the kind of thing that if if you're into the Harry Potter type stuff, you might get a kick out of this. Um, but again, if you're one of the older Harry Potter people, it's certainly not as dark. It gets dark at times, but it's certainly not dark at all. Um, I, but yeah, this is this is very much geared toward 10, 11, 12 year olds who would totally get a kick out of going to school like this. I know I would if I was 10, 11, 12. Okay, I would still want to go when I'm this age and just hang out with the caretaker guy and just do magic stuff. You know, order beer, just hang out, rake stuff. I said rake. Okay. <sighs> I felt bad just making that comment. All right, let's pick tomorrow's episode. 86. Hey, oh, jeez, 86. I still have it in my Bluetooth. 86. Oh, okay. We're in a uh, documentary area. So this is an environmental one, I'm pretty sure. It is Chasing the Equinox. Chasing the Equinox. So, yeah. There we go. I will have to watch that next. Chasing the Equinox on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that. Bye.